and we're live hello everyone how are you today we have joe with us today again <laughs> how you doing joe i'm not too bad not too bad i've uh, got a bit of a sore throat but otherwise fine and um it's good to be here thank you for having me um oh, on your channel and i'm uh, yeah i'm a lot i'm a lot less nervous than the first time and um i i guess i would say to anybody who wants to speak out about Diamond Way or any other cult, it gets easier. Only when you're ready, but it gets easier. Yeah. So I'm good. I'm good. Sorry. <laughs> How are you? Oh, no, that's great. That's great. I'm I'm good. I'm just uh, happy that you're here to continue telling us your story. And I I really appreciate um, your your courage and your grace to just come on and, and try to help other people by um, getting your getting your story out there and getting the the information um, shared with people so that they can understand what a call is, um, the many facets of it, the tactics that are used, and um, hopefully either break out of one, avoid one, apply it to um, something that might might be going on in their life that there's a few similarities. So so yeah, I think it's it's very important important work that you're doing. So really really appreciate it. So it, <laughs> you're very welcome. So it's it's been a few weeks since um, yes. we got together with our um, first first uh, installment. And um, as you you just said that you um, have kind of been on a little bit of a journey. So um, I. I think that there may be people that are tuning in that that didn't get to catch the the first stream that we did. And if you'd like to just um, do a little bit of re recap, you know, an introduction and maybe a, a little bit of what we covered last time. And that way they don't have to go and pause this and go watch the other one first. You know, I think it, this this will be a little bit of a standalone as well. So. So, uh, yeah, sure. So I. Let me see. Uh, 15 years ago, I was involved with a group called Diamond Way. Um, <clears throat> I I was living on my own for the first time, and I was uh, young and naive and a bit of a hippie, and uh, so and I had an interest in Buddhism. So I got involved with this group, which I thought at the time was Buddhism, and there wasn't the information online like there is nowadays about these things. Um, and so, yeah, I got involved with this group and. Yeah, I guess that's the that's the kind of beginning of my story. Um, and how old I, were you? How, you, were, you were a teenager, right? I was 18, teenager. so yeah. technically an adult, but, you know, um, only just. Um, right. So, yeah, um, I guess if we, we recap um, the... The organizational structure, this was something we talked about last time. Uh, at the top, you have the leader, who is Ole Nidal. Uh, Ole Nidal is a Danish man um, who, in the 1960s, um, was convicted of smuggling drugs from um, uh, India and Nepal back to his native Denmark. Um, he was convicted of this and spent time in prison. Um, and uh, then on release from prison, he started this uh, this group called Diamond Way, and uh, started yeah creating these uh, meditation centers in um, first in Denmark, then in uh, Germany, and um, now they have centers in the UK and Germany, in Denmark, in America, Canada, um, Russia, lots of centers in Russia, um, Poland. I'm trying to think where else really? Yeah, all around the world really. Um, and yeah, so I, I yeah, I got involved in a, a one of these groups in um, in the UK. And so what, did, um, what would you say? What would what would you say was the appeal? Like, what did they profess to be um, that interested you? Well, they they claim to be a Buddhist meditation group, um, and as someone who had an interest in that, um, and you know, was a bit of a hippie, I thought. That was my kind of thing. Um, but, it, you know, as um, 
you know, there were certain kind of red flags or alarm bells that I, being only 18, ignored and didn't have the knowledge that I now have about how cults operate. Um, I mean, one of the first things I remember was I was reading a book by the Dalai Lama at the time. Obviously, there's since been some controversy with the Dalai Lama, but at the time, you know, we didn't know that. And, um, and you know, anyway, so um, I was reading a book by the Dalai Lama and I was told by um, the leaders of that group that I went to um, that I was not, that I shouldn't be reading a book by the Dalai Lama and that I should only read books by Ola Nidal which conveniently were available in the bookshop in this centre. <laughs> right, and, right. Um, and this is something we're going to get to later, actually, is they have their whole publishing arm. And this is yeah. um, this is what um, cult expert Jan Jalalic would refer to as a self-sealing system, mm, where yeah. they publish the books, they sell the books, you have to buy the books in order to do mm. the next meditation thing, right? And there's levels, like every every group. Right, I'm, I'm just thinking of The Bite Model, yeah. too, by Stephen Hawking. Yeah, exactly, right? So... It, you know, I, I've, done, I've, done a, I've done a podcast about the bite model and it, it ticks all the boxes. It was really yeah. quite eye-opening for me. Um, and so, yeah, they have these levels. Um, each level that you you do, you have to buy a new booklet from the, the Diamond Way Centre and you have to uh, either recite a mantra, the first few are mantras that you have to recite. Let me see if I can get this number right. Um, 111,000... 111 times there we go that many times um and then afterwards you have to do uh, prostrations in front of a picture of Ola Nidal for 111,111 times um and so yeah um yes yeah like I say like other groups of this kind you have the levels and you kind of work your way up the hierarchy um so yes, back to hierarchy. There's at the top, there's Ola Nidal, and then there is um, his kind of inner circle, as you get again with lots of these groups. Um, and um, many of the people in the inner circle are allegedly his partners, I should add, um, as well as people outside of the um, inner circle who are allegedly his partners for various alleged periods of time. Um, it's kind of complicated. We'll get into that later. Um, I have some slides all about that. Um, so yeah, and then below that you have what's called the traveling teachers, who um, the traveling teachers travel around to various centers around the world, and and Ola Nidal travels around to all these centers around the world, and Ola Nidal has all his expenses paid as he does this, um, whilst you know those lower down in the hierarchy are pressured to donate constantly, and um, there was an interesting thing that happened actually with this. So the first centre I went to when I was living on my own, um, this was in a different city. Um, they didn't, so I, I don't know the exact reason because I wasn't involved in it, but I know they got kicked out of the place that they'd hired for their centre, uh, for their meditation or gompa as they call it. Um, and this, uh, so they, they'd been kicked out. I, I'd heard various things that they were being too loud or being too drunk or being too, again, yeah, very Buddhist, right? Um, and uh, and yeah. all that they hadn't paid, they paid the rent. So they got kicked out of this room that they'd had at the top of what was a, a books bookshop or a library, a bookstore in American English. Um, and um, so then they had to move this centre into someone's house. And... Uh, I guess it's very interesting to see the difference between the leadership who have all their expenses paid, traveling around the world for free, and then you've got, you know, this sort of thing going on where the money's really tight. So, and then obviously below the traveling teachers, you have all the, the members, you have live-in members, uh, which luckily I never was, but you have live-in members um, who, yeah, um, there's various... Um, things that go on in those centers, which probably require a trigger warning. Um, and uh, and then there, there's there's people who I guess are not living members, and that was me. I was not a living member, thankfully. Yeah. So I was not quite, you know, I, I was not subjected quite so much to the whole free love thing that goes on in, in the centers. Um, so yeah. Alleged, um, allegedly, right? Alleged, yeah, <laughs> allegedly. Um, <laughs> we're getting... Alleg yeah, allegedly, you told me allegedly. we'll use allegedly um, a lot, right? 
Well, I'm less nervous this time, but yeah, I, I probably should. It's better to be safe, isn't it? Um, yeah. So, there's people, um, yeah, there's enough people that have confirmed it that, mm -hmm, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Ex okay. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so this is where the, the, the South Park reference comes from, yes. is because we have different libel laws and different laws in this country of, yeah, okay. so it's I'll see you in England is the, the South Park joke. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So these these um, all expenses, all expenses mm -hmm. paid trips, right? Who were they paid yep. by the the uh, lower level people that were paying for services? How what was um, there? So I. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, there was so there was a, a very constant pressure to donate money. And of course, there's money they make from selling these books constantly, things like that. So and um, photographs of Olenidal. They're always sold at the centres as well, um, which, looking back, is a bit weird, isn't it? Um, so people would have these these uh, pictures, and I guess to prostrate in front of, or just because they wanted them. Um, and so yeah, I I suspect that's where that money goes, but I I never dealt with the financial part of it. So right, and they're they're not tax exempt, right? Because they're not considered. A uh, religious um, uh, so I think they might have some tax exemption because they because of their their claim to be a Buddhist group. Um, there's some I explained this in the the first half. There's some clever word trickery that goes right. on where they can um, where they basically use one of the two translations of the traditional name of Tibetan Buddhism, um, which would be the way of the diamond or the way of the thunderbolt, which translates as. And so by calling themselves Diamond Way, they associate themselves with that, even though it's all Westerners. Ola is Danish. Danish uh, right. There's no Tibetans involved in any of it. As I, you know, it's almost like they, the Tibetans know what's up. You know, they're not involved in, in Diamond Way at all. Um, so, yeah. Um, I, yeah, I guess we're... <laughs> um, is it, what else should we recap on? Um, if you want to just uh, talk a little bit about how you, your quickly just your process and um, discovering that this wasn't for you, some of the the red flags that came up that you did start to heed, and um, your exit a little bit. You know, so I mean the the biggest thing was uh, I went to a, a lecture. Um, which was held by Olanida, which was supposed to be, uh, the lecture was supposed to be about um, karma or reincarnation or some Buddhist topic. Um, and in spent, he, instead, he spent the entire time, several hours ranting about how much he hated Muslims and black people. And uh, we're going to see in the slides that we have coming up, this is a regular mm -hmm. fixture. He has, he has some pretty uh, allegedly apparent views. Um, and, you know, I, yeah, that was, um, by that point, it had been, I think, a year and a half, maybe two years. So I was kind of more invested. And um, but like, I still remember thinking to myself that this is not Buddhism, you know, this is not. And um, an interesting thing, actually, I was thinking about earlier today about this is a lot of the repetitive practices which Diamond Way engages in or gets the followers to engage in um, have the effect of kind of um, removing people from their emotions or disconnecting people from their emotions. And again, this is something we see in lots of groups, lots of these cult groups. Um, and so if you've got somebody who is disconnected from their compassion and their sense of empathy, which again is hugely ironic for a group that claims to be Buddhist, isn't it really, that you'd mm. be not compassionate. But um, when you've got people in that state of mind, you can see why when you have the leader going on stage and saying these things, you don't get the backlash that you should get. Sorry, I hit the table there. You don't get the backlash that you should get when somebody, you know, and I guess I don't want to toot my own horn, but I guess to, to my credit, I obviously was not, um, yeah, I obviously was not um, indoctrinated sufficiently to, to not go, you know, Ooh, alarm. Right. Just go along with it. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, that's, that's great. It's probably um, 
speaks a lot to your fortitude and, and that thing inside of you that was like, no, I'm not mm. going to compromise on this. And yeah. it, it is good. Like you said, that you did, you didn't um, live within the commune or the mm. compound. So you did still have a little bit of independence, which. Yeah. I think that made a big difference. Yeah. That's good. That's good. But yeah, you, you hit it on the nail. I mean, so many things that, um, you referred to and and said, hey, these, this is something that a lot of these high control groups have in common. And whether you label it this, that, or the other thing, it, it is, uh, you know, same same animal, different spots, right? It's, it's yeah, crazy. exactly. And I I apologize for my slightly hoarse voice today. That's okay. Um, I'm always hoarse. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so I believe due to our... Um, our excellent uh, person behind the scenes. I don't know if they want really? to be named. Um, yeah, I always, we have, I always some, we have some slides available. I blow her kisses. We love Juliana. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Juliana. You guys are so, uh, there we go. Um, tech, yeah, tech savvy. <laughs> so I guess um, this feels weird. First slide, please. <laughs> Can you right. There we go. Right. Okay. So this is from an interview which Ola Nidal did with um, the La Crosse Tribune, which is a newspaper in America. Um, right, La Crosse is in Wisconsin, I think. Is that right? I'm not sure. No? Okay. Anyway, um, and the journalist is called Joe Orso, and he did, um, so he did this interview with Ola Nidal. And what I think is, so the bit that's highlighted here, this is my own emphasis, is I think the most crucial and damning part of the entire interview and really any interview, any, any, uh, sorry, any interview he's done is that um, he basically admits to his behavior there in the centers and what he does with his uh, students or his followers. Um, uh, should we read it out? I don't um, yeah, I guess maybe for those that are listening instead of watching. Sure. Um, okay, it says, uh, trying to back it up to give some context. Uh, okay. Um, when I asked him, meaning uh, the journalist asking Ollie, Ollie Nito, yeah, Ollie Nito, um, when I asked him the next day about claims that he has uh, in encounters with his students, he didn't deny this. Sorry, I gotta get a little closer because my eyes are, huh. Um, there's no teacher- Would you like student. me to read it? Oh, sure, go ahead. Cause my, yeah, okay. it's a little bit small on my screen. Yeah, no problem. Uh, so this is uh, Joe also the journalist um, saying, when I asked him, that's on Nidal, the next day about claims that he has those kind of encounters with his students, he didn't deny this. And the quote is, this is Alanida saying this. There's no teacher-student relationship involved in that, he said by phone. They're not Diamond Way Buddhists. Sorry, they're Diamond Way Buddhists, but they're not my students in that moment. They're equal partners. While I know, and this is also saying this again, while I know I might be accused of Puritan values, I firmly believe that such student-teacher relationships are predatory and no clever logic can change to that. And to add to his recklessness, Nidal ended our conversation by describing Islam as criminal. Hmm. So again, we've got another um, reference here to his view on Islam, uh, his problematic views on Islam. And um, so I, again, I think I missed it also fit um, his nail on the head here is that when you've got uh, relationships of that kind between a teacher and a student, you, how can they possibly be equal partners in that moment, as he claims? There's a power imbalance. And That's so it. it's, you know, it's, um, yeah, I, I think this is pretty, this is pretty self-explanatory. Um, so, yeah. Um, I guess next slide. Uh, did you have anything to say about that? Uh, no, Wisconsin. you, said it, you, Thank you. Said it perfectly. I agree. I, I totally agree that there is a power imbalance and it sound pretty yeah. inappropriate to myself. Yeah. Yeah. OK. 
Okay, so this is slide number two, and uh, we've um, we've blocked out the um, <clears throat> uh, the Diamond Way members' face there for for her privacy, um, and I hope that person is doing better now. Um, so here are some uh, quotes from Olenida, which really um, show his um, attitudes towards um, towards black people and people of color. Um, uh, should, should I read these out again? I... Sure. I think yeah? it's okay. Okay. So um, I, I feel dirty just reading this out, to be honest. Yeah. It's, it's really okay. horrible. But Well, um, why, don't we, why don't we say this? Anyone who's listening, um, yeah. why don't you go back and watch the replay? You can read the slides. But basically, oh. um, he's saying some really horribly um, not nice things about people of color and um these are quotes out of his own mouth so we yep. you know we don't really want to from his books read these right so uh, quotes from his actual books mm -hmm. so just go back and, and read them but suffice it to say um that they are very racist and terrible so we don't want to yep. we don't want to give yep. him uh any airtime like that <laughs> yeah and i, I don't want to you know have have bits clipped out to suggest that you know, because right, I once, agree. Uh, yeah. You know, Diamond Way might set the trolls in us that would do that. Anyway, um, right, exactly. So, uh, next slide, please. So, this is a collection of Alani Dow's quotes about Islam. Um, again, I'm not sure I want to read these out, so I guess no, maybe the same thing quotes, applies. Um, yeah, I'd say just go back and and uh, yeah. read the slide. But again, but. so. Um, huge amounts of racism and Islamophobia here on display. Um, yep. And yeah, this is the kind of things I, I heard him say during that lecture and and worse, I must admit. There's things, um, he does seem to have some, what's the word? Some, some self-realization that there's things he publishes and things he only says. Um, mm. but still, you know, he, this is, this is bad enough and this is, this is, you know, published stuff. So yeah, um, it's pretty, pretty shocking. Next, next slide, please. And here we have a collection of his homophobic statements. Um, again, it, it's, um, just horrible attitudes really um and you know it just goes to show that he seems to have these views about lots of different minorities um and you know i guess as i said where's the compassion right yeah and i, I think where's that's an appropriate the... that's an appropriate picture uh to go with that of him the just the look <laughs> on his face mm, yeah you know yeah, yeah just, that's not a, that's not a compassionate look on his face. I guess <laughs> maybe it's fair to say um, not very not very Buddhist. <laughs> no, indeed, that. indeed. Oh yes, well there we go. If I can, angry. yeah. Yep. So uh, Juliana says he looks very angry. So yes, um, and this is something I mentioned on one of uh, Marilyn's streams previously, is that. Um, People are disconnected from their emotions at the lower levels and are not allowed to experience certain emotions. Certain emotions are not considered valid or appropriate, but yet he's clearly allowed to be angry, allowed to, you know, display these attitudes. So, yeah, well said. Um, I, yeah, ne next slide. Do you have anything to say about that before we move? No, I was just going to say a good, no. good point <laughs> because uh, you, you know, you, yeah. you explain it, you explain it so well, and I, I'm just thinking of so many parallels from my my own situation and from uh, other cults that I've seen. Is that the the uh, leader always has his own set of rules or her her own set of rules? Yeah, definitely, and it's um, yeah, all these groups have one set of rules for the leadership and another for. Mm -hmm followers um definitely 
there we go, same thing. <laughs> um, thank you. Um, so next slide, please. Right, so this is um, some background here. Um, when I when I left the group, um, I um, I burnt all my my books and my my mala and other things. Um, I'm sorry, I should probably explain. The mala is the um, like a set of beads. I guess in, what in Christianity would be called a rosary bead. Um, in Buddhism they're called malas, yeah. and in Hinduism as well they're called malas. Um, and that's part of legitimate Buddhism. That's not just a diamond way thing. Um, Anyway, so this is, so I, I burnt all my books, but then I have found subsequently recently that uh, somewhere online, these, some of these books have leaked um, from other people who have left. And so this is, um, this is an introduction, I believe from, I think this, yeah, this must be the prostrating thing because it says, P.S. Remember to protect your knees and wrists, and don't do all don't do all 111,111 on the first weekend. Um, so yes, he's talking about um, doing the prostrations in front of a picture of him, and um, and we've got so you haven't really got all of it there, but the the bit on the. Uh, the lower right is the beginning also of um, what they call the four thoughts, which is something that's done at the beginning of every meditation session. Um, and this really enforces the idea that um, you are not your emotions, you are not your body, your body is worthless, and in some, to some degree you are worthless, and that you should, you know, sacrifice yourself and that you're lucky to even be involved in diamond way somehow and you know all these sorts of things that are put in and um this is this is particularly insidious because this is a twisting of a more legitimate buddhist thing um so there is something called there is something in buddhism called uh, the four noble truths right and but what diamond way has done is they've twisted it to mean what I was talking about just now, as opposed to the original thing. And so this is an example of, of that in this uh, bottom right corner. Um, if we go to the top left, top left corner, um, let me see. Yeah, he, so he's talking about the, uh, the prostrations and effectively inviting people to go to one of his um, things, um, his lectures or his things where he places the metal thing on people's head and mutters nonsense. Anyway, it's not important. Um, so, next so for, slide, anyone, any for anyone who doesn't um, under, to, to know, like most people probably do know what prostration means, but mm. um, so like laying face first on the ground, yes. right? Uh, in front so, of so what you're in this case? In front of his picture, yes. So what, 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 the way it was done is you put your hands together there, there, and then there, and then and then up again, and the same again. Hmm. Um, oh, this is not one of the numbered ones, but okay. Um, so uh, this is, yeah, well, again, part of the, the leaked books. And this is, um, it talks about like rivers of blood and, um, and fire and all sorts of crazy things. Um, and uh, yeah, there we've got, this is um, the uh, the black coat thing is um, something which would be sung at the end of every uh, meditation session. We'd have this. Um, now the version I remember did not have the translation. When I, so I don't, I think this leaked a bit later because the version that I had when I was in, we were not told the translation. So maybe that's changed in the meantime, I don't know. Um, yeah, so that's, um, okay, so this is the last slide, um, I think, and so I particularly wanted to point this out because Diamond Way claim that their teachings are 
traditional Tibetan Buddhist teachings, which go back somewhere between 500 and 1,000 years, right? Um, but on the other hand, everything is copyrighted and everything has to be bought from them only and read from them only. Mm -hmm. so, um, so which one is it, Diamond Way? Because it can't be both, can it? Right. So that's why I wanted to point that out, is, yeah, everything's Good copyrighted. Point, yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, um, yes, Denver, Steve, you did make it. Um, uh, hello. Um, so yeah, that's, I guess that's the end of the slides. Um, obrigado, Juliana. Um, any thoughts on any of those? Wow. So, so much going through my head. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, it's. Number one, it's very hard to uh, take anything this this guy says seriously, uh, given uh -huh. his um, terrible views on um, the LGBTQIA plus community, um, people of color, other religions. It's uh -huh. just you know, a classic classic cult leader here and. Uh, and you don't find that out until you've got up to a certain right. level. I was say, yeah, I was going to say that is that he seems to have that mm -hmm. um, the charm and the ability to pull yep. people in and also to twist things like to yep. even twist um, the, the logic of uh, having relationships, intimate relationships with his followers and then just kind of saying, well, they're not really my followers when this is happening. Really? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, really. Uh, yeah. 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 It's, um, I think it's really important to know that there are so many groups out there that are like wolves in, in sheep's clothing and profess to be mm -hmm. legit, like Buddhists and, uh, you know, other, other religions, mainstream religion. Yeah. And there's, there's thousands of them. And this one seems yeah. to have really had gained gained a lot of traction i'm not sure um how it is now is it is it waning a little bit as far as um so it's difficult to tell but my understanding is it's waned a little bit as ola Nidal has got older and has um been less with it i guess it's fair to say um allegedly i've again i have no i, I have no desire to go to any more of his lectures or watch any videos of him, so I don't know. But there's um, there is the Rick Ross Cult Education Forum, which um, for anybody who doesn't know it, there's a Diamond Way thread on there, um, which has about 400 pages or something ridiculous. Um, so I wouldn't recommend reading it all, of course, but unless you're glutton for punishment. But um, there's yeah, so there is um, talk in there that he is. Um, declining um mm -hmm. and obviously as his as his influence declines and all the inner circle kind of push for influence to try and take over there is um there's yeah uh, um i think that's that's hurting the influence that they they have i guess i'd say um so there is some evidence that is waning but not not that much and I guess it's fair to say not as much as I would like, but that's, right. that's a given. Right. Um, uh, a link for what? Sorry. Is this the forum? Oh, the forum, I believe. Yeah. Um, we can put it in the description later. We can do that if you want to yeah, find it later. To... Oh, okay. And you can post it too. Oh, there we go. I've got it. Oh, awesome. Okay, it's not quite 400 pages. It's it's about 200. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> um, so, let me, there we go. Uh, there we go. There is. There we go. Uh, so Juliana should be able to put that up on screen um, no. if she wants to. Um, yeah, so sorry, where were we? 
Oh, <laughs> oh, we're talking about um, the uh, the influence that it still wields today, mm -hmm. whether it's waning. And you said that there, are, um, you know, there's people obviously speaking out like yourself and others, mm -hmm. and um, you know, that journalist uh, putting it out there. Yeah, so I'd, I'd say it's followers. still quite. It still has quite a lot of. Um, I wouldn't say power, quite a lot of um, pulling power, I guess, in uh, places in Eastern Europe, particularly um, Poland and Russia. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I can see how Ola Nidal's views would fit in with the current government in Russia. So um, <laughs> there's that. Yeah, um, yeah if, I, if I fall out of a window, you know why. Um, yeah, so... Uh, yeah. Um, let me see. Yeah. So, and Poland, they particularly had um, links with the far right, the political far right in Poland and, and uh, Germany and on some other places as well, um, who obviously share those views. So, yeah, it's 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 bizarre when you think about it that you've got a group that claims to be Buddhist that's aligning itself with the far right, but. They seem to have forgotten completely that Buddhism is not, you know, native to here or yeah, or there or anywhere. Or, you know. Yeah, it it so, almost it almost seems like they're taking some of the practices of Buddhism that is designed to center you, uh, make you peaceful, make you, um, you know, uh, I, I always think of, of uh, Buddhism as being like you know, just um, breathing exercises and just being, being like, um, just peace loving and um, just, you know, calm. And they want their followers to be um, calm and gentle and open to. I don't think thoughts. they want them to be gentle, but. Well, they probably want them towards him. No, what I'm saying is that yeah, they, okay. they want to make them docile towards. Yes, towards docile, them. that's the word, yep. But, but. Yep. Um, but also, and this is another thing that checks off the boxes in cults, um, in my cult and for Scientology, other other ones that I can think of right now is having this common enemy kind of thing too, where, mm -hmm. um, turning you against anyone that's not like your cult, anyone that's not in your cult or like you. So, um, marginalizing people of, um, different races, different religions, uh, different mm -hmm. lifestyles, um, having that kind of cookie cutter mentality. Again, it's it's just classic cult control. It's yep, yep, and terrible too. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's um, I mean, so the description you had of Buddhism or the, your understanding of it is actually pretty much what mine was before Diamond Way, right? Mm -hmm. So this is why. As an 18-year-old, when I looked at, oh, local Buddhist groups, right? Uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I think it's it's important to um, highlight the age and the, in how impressionable you were because you weren't living at home anymore, but you hadn't mm -hmm. really started, you know, a big career or life track. So yeah. that's, that's what happened with me, too. I was... Uh, just I just turned 20 and uh yeah I didn't know what I was going to do with my life you know <laughs> that's how they get yeah. you unfortunately isn't it mm -hmm. yeah and colleges mm -hmm. are are definitely major mm -hmm. recruiting grounds for cults yep mm -hmm. absolutely so is there anything else you wanted to um dive into before we just do a little bit of interaction with yeah, the chat sorry. I have, um, I did have some notes here. Um, let me see. Yeah, so um, I guess to, to tie up the end of the story, um, after I, um, when I told them that I didn't want to be involved with this group anymore, um, all of the people who I'd met in this group, many of whom I regarded as my friends at the time, um, suddenly would no longer talk to me. 
Um, again, this is quite typical of cults, isn't it? Um, yep. And so all contact was cut there. Um, and um, I also had some summer uh, harassment for about six months. Um, and, you know, stuff posted about me on the internet and that sort of stuff. Um, which, uh, yeah, I guess I... It's difficult to really go into that sort of stuff without have without giving it oxygen, which I don't want to do. Um, right. So, yeah. And then after about six months, they finally got a life and left me alone. And uh, this is where I talk about Diamond Way Trolls. Um, is that yeah they they finally got a life and left me alone after about six months um which again you know is six months is not a great deal of time compared to some of the other groups that you talk about on your channel where you can have a lifetime of this sort of stuff but it's more than it should be um for That's any cool. group um and as someone i'm really sorry but i can't remember the person's name as someone said in a previous chat if you can't quit, it's not legit. And, yeah. you know, if um, I was I was told that by leaving, I was throwing away my chance at enlightenment and that, you know, I would, all sorts of nonsense, um, and that I was spiritually weak and mentally ill, this is another thing that was frequently said and is frequently said by Diamond Way members, um, it's weird, although it was those two phrases. I, I can only assume they get that from Olanido or something. Um, but yeah, and so if you're told those things, and thank you from a poet. Poet, of course. Big, big shout out for that. <laughs> hey, poet. <Yes. laughs> of course, because it rhymes. It's from Mr. Poet. Right, okay. Um, so yeah, so if you choose to leave a group and you get... Uh, told that you're throwing away your only chance at achieving anything yep. uh, spiritually or whatever, and you're harassed after leaving, and all the people you know in that group suddenly don't want to know you, don't talk to you anymore. Yep. It's a cult. It's a cult. <laughs> it's yeah. A cult. So, yeah. Isn't that uh, free? Was that, was that freeing for you to have that? you know, even, even a gradual re revelation, but be able to mm. tick off all, you know, check off all the boxes and be like, oh my God, it was definitely a cult because it well, took yeah, me so, years um, to come to that realization. I, I was like, I'm a hundred percent sure that was a cult. <laughs> you know? Well, so I'd already, um, I'd already had some inkling of that because after I got out, I described it as a cult-like group. Um, right. But as I've been, you know, doing the podcast I've been doing and SPTV and all that sort of stuff, and I've done research, particularly for my podcast, things like the bike model, which I did a podcast about. Um, yeah, that's when I was like, hey, it ticks all the boxes. I can remove the word like, <laughs> you know? Absolutely. It's not cult-like. Yeah. It is a cult. Mm -hmm. yeah. And... Um, you know, um, yeah. Yeah. It, uh, yeah. I, I hadn't, uh, picked up on that last time when we talked, but, uh, the fact that they're saying that basically they're the only way, right? Because you're going to lose mm -hmm. your, uh, only chance at, um, enlightenment or in my case, it was, um, yeah, pretty much any other Christian church. It got, mm -hmm. it didn't start off like this, where we're the only church, the only true church. But it got to where. Oh, but they know that they know that if they said that at the start, you'd run a mile. So they don't right. tell you that until you're in. Right, and then all of a sudden, just these yep. these forty or fifty people yep. are the only ones that have the truth. <laughs> really, mm. you know. It's just, and it ties insanity. in with this idea that you know you shouldn't be reading books by anybody else other than Ola Nidal. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. they're not, you know. Yeah. Uh, Marlene didn't read. She didn't write any books herself. But uh, she was really big on um, the the Gothard teaching, 
Gothard, mm-hmm. Bill Gothard teaching from the IBLP until he kind of had that uh, little, uh, not little, a really big uh, slip up and ended up having to step down. So she still used the umbrella of authority because that was her favorite, her favorite teaching of his mm-hmm. and um, a lot of uh, the other things. But yeah, she didn't have that, but she, she was really into martyrs. Um, there was, there was a mystic, a Christian, they called her a mystic called Madame Guillaume. And it was basically a um, Christian writer who had, I think she'd been sealed in a dungeon and um, because of her, her Christian beliefs in France okay. and she was um, mm-hmm. gone, but she had written some books and they were very, um, yeah, mystical. It, um, we used a lot of practices that were kind of the mind emptying things, but Marlene was against, she was against the new age. So we could never study Buddhism or Hinduism or right. anything like that, but it was her brand of it. It was her brand of it. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. It's funny how, how they just have their own, they take, what they want, just like Keith Ranieri took from Scientology and a lot of things, and they make yeah. their own belief system. So there are, um, in that forum, that thread I, I linked, there are allegations in that thread um, from posters that Ola Nidal had studied that in the same way that um, oh. Ranieri had. Yeah, so I have no evidence for that, and I've not seen any evidence from the person that posted that, but that is mm-hmm. something that's been alleged. So, Interesting. yeah. Wow. So we have some people coming in. They're uh, saying hello to you, Joe. And uh, Hans Christian Swartz, good evening, Joe and Marilyn. Got online today. I got online late today. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> Hans Christian Schwartz. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. Well, Mr. Oh. Black. Schwarz <laughs> means black. So. Then for Steve-O. Oh, we made Whoa. it. <laughs> Steve-O. Here we've got Joel, <clears throat> our friend Joel, Michelle. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us. All right, so we've got a few things, uh, start questions if you want to take some comments. Yeah, and I, oh, yeah, and I can do this, can't I? Sorry, I thought I was on mute for a moment. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Um, So there we go for anyone who hasn't seen it. Um, Part one is also live and exclusive only on Marilyn's channel. Um, And I'll I'll add it to the description after we're done here too, that the video. Sounds like a plan. Cool. Having to pay for enlightenment is a big red flag for me. Yes, yes, and agreed. Yeah, agreed. Um, things. Oh, I need to unstar them as well. I don't know. So oh, I got I'm it. I, I'm unstarring you yours. Yep, yep. Okay, thank you. Um, <laughs> I tend to use OBS, you see, so it's all new to me. Okay. Um, things he publishes and things he only says. Yes, indeed. Um, and. Yeah, I guess, yeah, like I say, there's obviously some self-realization here that is things he feels he can't publish. Um, he um, Actually, this reminds me, there's another thing um, that I posted in Coffee, Colts and Crafts group, um, which was that he was uh, convicted by court in Austria of hate speech. So oh. obviously some of these things are catching up with him. Um Right, next one. Yes, indeed, isn't it just as unfortunately, I guess this is um this reminds me a lot of what Chris Shelton says is things that he says about like unfortunately as part of human nature, or they manipulate parts of human nature, and so it's unfortunately I don't know if you'll ever get rid of cults, but yeah. Mm. I think uh, that the education, okay. the education is really, really important. Yeah. Um, I never learned about this. And, and, you know, the fact that we, we talk quite a bit about the age group that seems to be um, the most um, prevalent 
in, in joining cults is that mm-hmm. kind of late teen, mid twenties to early, you know, thirties group, especially the, the late teens to the mid twenties. And mm-hmm. if there was, if there was a um, mandated, you know, in, in high school, you know, age appropriate uh, curriculum, teaching kids not only about um, cults, but the uh, course of control tactics. And, and absolutely, I think that I think that it, it may help people to avoid as they get older, you know. So um, tying into you... that is the below yeah. comment. Um, I was also going to um, add to that, actually, that it's when people are going through periods of big change in their life is particularly when people tend to get drawn to these things um, or when people are going through some period of vulnerability. So, you know, I was, I was young and living on my own for the first time. And so that was a period of immense change in my life at the time. And so, you know, it can also happen if someone is for instance, newly divorced or they've had their partner die or, um, yeah, all sorts of things can also lead to that. So it's periods of upheaval and change can. Right. Right. Um, I just want to read Joel's so comment. Was, yeah, um, okay, go on. I want to read Joel's comment. Just, just for anyone who's listening, doing the dishes or yeah. whatever. <laughs> uh, Joel, uh, I was so lucky. Oh, go go ahead. Ahead. I was so lucky. I never was tempted by any control groups. In the 70s, the Church of Scientology were trying to find folks on campus. And I know a few who give it who gave it a whirl. The, the Jehovah's Witnesses were all over, but they appeared nuts. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, I did an interview with Lloyd Evans that you might find interesting oh, about the really? uh, JWs. Nice. Um, yes, absolutely. Uh, the leader is always allowed what the followers aren't. Yes, exactly. That's that's a, that's a bite model thing, isn't it? As well. Mm-hmm. My full name. Oh, you Matthew pronounce Dank. his full name? Like Hans Christian yep. Schwartz. Woher kommst du? Nach Deutschland oder Österreich? Oder Schweiz? Weiß ich nicht. Okay. Um, oh, here's the full name. Okay. Hans Christian Wolfgang Schwartz. Wow. Oh, try that again. Hans I would Christian picture I'd, be, I'd say Wolfgang Schwartz. Schwartz. <laughs> Schwartz. Schwartz. <laughs> Do you know, uh, Deutschland, okay, natürlich. And so this reminds me, um, are you familiar with Kate Born, Bornstein? Kate, what is it, Born? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I, for the longest time, I read her surname as if it was, is it her or they? Sorry. I read their surname as if it was German, like Bornstein. Oh, right. But it's yeah. Bornstein because it's American. And, oh, right. Yeah. Um, I like your pronunciations better. <laughs> it's frightening to know that there are so many cults that some of us, me, know nothing about. Yeah, indeed. And there's plenty of cults that we know nothing about. And how right. could we, you know? They're, and they're, they're popping up. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And, you know, maybe we are in the current climate that we live in maybe we are going through a period of big upheaval which is making certain groups seem more appealing to people i don't know mm-hmm. good point there is that tribal thing we all have and it's in our nature yeah sad but true absolutely on campus when i went i let's start again on campus when i went was a wild kind of place. It was the early 70s, but I was young. I started when I was 17. The folks that were in their 20s seemed to be the main target of the Church of Scientology and the Jehovah's Witnesses. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And as we've proven, people that age are the target group of Diamond Way too. Hmm. There we go. Chris Shelton is guess. Absolutely, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, very, very smart. Ah, you do. <laughs> okay. Um, I have you to do, put more into it to make it sound less. 
Okay. <laughs> I love it. That is so funny. Möglichkeiten. It's a great word. Um, yeah, I have nothing more to say about that. <laughs> and here's the other, maybe German, I don't know. Macht mir noch egal. Sorry. Macht mir doch egal. German is pretty if spoken right. I mean, any language is if you speak it in a certain way, but yeah. And she would know. Sophia would know. <laughs> yeah. How do you, oh. how do you say, how do you ask someone, uh, do you, do you speak German? Uh, sprichst du Deutsch? Okay. Or if you want to be more polite, sprechen Sie Deutsch. Yeah. My adopted yeah. mom used to say that. Uh, spoke, it sounded like spoken die Deutsch. I'm like, what? I don't know what that is. <laughs> Well, there's, there's, um, in America, you have Pennsylvania Dutch, don't you? Which is actually yeah. closer to German than Dutch. Yeah. So I wonder if there's some Pennsylvania Dutch or Texas German as well that has that kind of accent, I think. Right. That probably... Maybe, I don't know. Yeah, that was the only sentence I knew, and yeah. it's totally uh, not, pronounced, <laughs> not pronounced correctly. I know that. So funny. <laughs> oh. That's a good question. No. Um, we'll have to and here was the answer. <laughs> Ta-da! Yeah, no diamonds involved except for symbols. Yeah, right? no diamonds at all. Yeah, yeah, okay, I can see why. Okay, it finally clicked in my mind. Okay. <laughs> yes, agreed. Stimmt. Low German. Yep. I, do you, does that make sense, low German? I don't know. I mean, okay, I, think so, of, I think of low anything is just kind of like down home, you know? <laughs> like, so um, historically, there were two, there was kind of a split in German. I don't know where we end up talking about this, but whatever, it's fine. Uh, there was a split in German between the dialects which were spoken in the north of Germany, which was called low German, Again, why? Because it's not low, it's but whatever. Um, yeah. Maybe because it was low like the Netherlands, I don't know. But mm. the dialects which were spoken in the north of Germany were known as Low German. And one of those, of course, is uh, Saxon, which, came, which became Anglo-Saxon in the UK when the Anglo-Saxons invaded the UK, um, mainly England. And so uh, English and Dutch come from uh, Low German. Whereas uh, standard German, um, as it's spoken today, comes from the form of Germany, form of German, which is kind of more central, which is called Hochdeutsch or High German. And so, well, there we go. So, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, yeah. But um, modern standard German is Hochdeutsch, which is the High German, so the opposite. And so you have different pronunciation of things and different, particularly vowel sounds is a, is a thing that really changes between uh, Plattdeutsch and Hochdeutsch. Um, and then of course, if you speak standard German like I do, and you go to Switzerland or Austria or Bavaria, they speak a completely different form of German again, and it's really confusing. Wow. So particularly Schweizerdeutsch in Switzerland, it's just like, what? Anyway, they and speak standard so German not, too. They just it's have not their own. like other dialects or German. Like they they don't really understand each other. They or they do understand. Like they all they learn agree, standard right? German in school, but mm -hmm. like you have different dialects. And I guess also it's um, more the fact that the country of Germany did not um, come together until eighteen right. something. So relatively recent in history. Whereas obviously. You know, English was a lot more, more unified, or other yeah. other countries' languages. Hmm. Yeah, like it. Yeah, uh, Italy is Italy's <laughs> like that too. Is other, yeah, southern yeah, exactly. Italy, northern Italy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Again, the eighteen hundreds they came together. Do you even know that? Um, right. Yeah, it sounds about right. It was after the Franco-Prussian War, so. That's when uh, they really came together, I think. You know what I think um, would be really cool? You should do sometime, Joe. <laughs> I'm going to have an, ideas for other people to do, right? But um, okay. it would be really cool to do like a day a day live stream, right? And have the mm -hmm. um, 
the German, you know, the German watchers and different people kind of ask you questions like in different languages. I would watch it. I would have no idea what any of you guys are saying, but I just think it would be so cool and fascinating. <laughs> sure. I mean, that's the sort of nonsense I would probably do on my channel. Absolutely. Yeah, do it. that's what Let's I'm saying. Not my. Let's do it. Yeah, that Let's would do be it. great. Yeah. <laughs> I do it on your channel. Um, I guess I, I feel like now we're talking about German, but. Um, if you have any questions about Diamond Way, of course. Diamond Way, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm happy to talk about German or any other language, but, um, well, if we're fan of speaking about Portuguese, then I'm probably going to have to defer to Juliana. But otherwise. Um, <laughs> right, right. I did have another question, uh, yes. a, a little question about Diamond Way. but um, Well, not really a question about Diamond Way, but just in general, I just want to get your take on this. Is that yeah. um, I I met a um, young man a few years ago, strangely enough, up in New Hampshire at um, the place where we we go to vacation sometimes, and mm -hmm. their, uh, his parents were you know renting a little cottage next near ours, and um, kind of, kind of we just got talking and we got talking about cults and we just really hit it off and I told him a little bit of my experience and it turns out that when he was in college, he and his twin brother were um, recruited by this. Um, I don't even know. He called it a hippie cult, but it did seem to have a lot of um, Christian roots, but maybe um, some Buddhist roots and yoga and different things. But he and his brother mm -hmm. were recruited into this and they were in for many years. As far as I know, his, I don't know if his brother's still in it, but they married and had children in the in the cult and they all had their names changed and <clears throat> he still would um do a double take when someone would call him by his real you know his his mm -hmm. birth his birth name but um he and his wife and it was arranged arranged marriages he and his wife got out with their kids and mm -hmm. it was like he said it was like learning you know a new like being dropped in a new country coming out of it and it was just so mm -hmm. heartbreaking because i just remember their mother who was like in her 70s maybe 60s or 70s just getting really weepy thinking of the other twin that was still still in there and the grandchildren and daughter-in-law that she wasn't able to see so for some reason the name the name change seemed to be a, a huge emphasis and um i mean i know things like identity and things like but um yours was wasn't a full name change where you had to go and do it at like the city hall or anything right no so this is this is something we talked about in the first yeah. the first half the first part for people who are a bit confused um when i when i was in diamond way we had um what they call a, a refuge name which is um when you go to a certain lecture by ola Nidal, um they give you a tibetan name which um, you are not supposed to share with anyone outside the group. Um, and so I, another thing we discussed in the previous um, episode, previous show was like, there was no explicit punishment ever mentioned if you did mention it outside the group, but um, it was a thing that, you know, this is, this is something that you're never meant to share um, outside of the group, but inside the group, people would sometimes refer to you by those names and sometimes refer to you not. So it's not as extreme as cults which give you an entire new name, um, but it's kind of in that direction. Mm. Yeah, that's that's really interesting because it's yeah. almost like part of the, the whole uh, mystique of almost having a different um, nomenclature or dialect mm -hmm. or just different language, you know, that yeah. is like only only um, the followers kind of can understand and almost oh, like there's a lot of that in diamond way where they use tibetan words for things and yeah. or you know things that um ola Nidau has come up with phrases and you know so yeah there is a bit of that kind of having their own language it's not as extreme as other groups but it's there and it's a mm -hmm. thing and the thing with the name change, I think we, we talked about this last time. Oh, hey, Mitch. How are you hey, doing? Hey, Mitch. Great to see you. Awesome. It's great to see you, Mitch. Carry yeah, on. Mitch. <laughs> yeah, I stayed up till about 2 o'clock in the morning the other night watching him. He, he had different people on his stream, and it was great. That was, was amazing. 
Yeah, it was, it was great. That was so delightfully um, chaotic. It was great. Yeah. So, so where was I? I was, I was fangirl. Uh, names. Um, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, we, I think we touched on this uh, last time. Is almost like the connotation of ownership. You know, like you're, you're ours now. Like you're part of our family. I mean, there's a lot, a lot of cults that do that. Like I think of Heaven's Gate, which is kind of an extreme example. But well, they're all extreme. Let's face it. But. Um, Oh, they all had the, the same last name. And I yeah. I remember being in, in my cult, um, them having this emphasis emphasis on basically where your where your family now, where your new family. Mm. And Marlene was kind of like the mother, the mother figure. And now I just find that so kind of triggering, you know, that whole connotation of, of family. So we have SP royalty in the house. We do. Great to see you. Yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah, I, I think that's a, I think Marcus that's an interesting, interesting way of looking at it. Is this idea of ownership? Is that um, it's um, yeah, it's a part of. I mean, this thing about oh, we're your family now is a very is a thing that's used in lots of cults as well, isn't it? And this idea that. Oh. Yeah, to I mean, I guess it is, isn't it? To control someone's identity is to control the person. If you, mm. and again, maybe this is this is related to the whole thing I was saying earlier about disconnecting people from their emotions. Is that once you control someone's behaviour and personality and all these things, what's really left other than you know a diamond way zombie? You know, right? That's that's or any cult zombie. That's that's kind of what you end up with, and so. Yeah. As you say, it's about ownership and it's about keeping them docile or docile, mm -hmm. as you say. And um, yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking of the, the um, analogy of like the, the cookie cutter analogy yes. and they objectify you. Yeah, yes. absolutely. You're an object, right? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, carry on. Just, um, that's okay. Just when, when, when Mitch said that, I thought of... Um, you were you were saying about how this is a little bit off the, the topic we were talking about, but you were saying mm -hmm. earlier about how um, you you were like um, made made to feel like your life was worthless, your body was worthless. You know, it, it was just yeah. you you had to transcend, you know, from from where you were. And I, and I was thinking about that too. It's like there were different names for um, our physical being in different cults. Like ours, we were called vessels. We were just empty vessels for well, Marlene to fill with with her doctrine and her beliefs. Mm. And in what was it in um, Heaven's Gate? They were they were vehicles. You know, I think Scientology is what meat bodies. You know, mm. it's just you're yeah you're like an object for them to just yep. fill. Oh, That's I nice thinking, yeah. Yeah, I know. I was saying about the cookie cutter thing, um, which mm -hmm. kind of goes along with that. Is that I think that's why so many cult leaders are. Um, against you know lbgtq ia community um different uh races different because they want everybody to look alike sound alike think mm -hmm. alike be alike so that they can control you you know so that's why yeah. you lose your individuality yeah. yeah yeah absolutely no no personality allowed yep. yeah yeah agreed well it's so great to be free <laughs> isn't it yeah, to anyone, I mean, we usually say it's about OSA, but to anyone watching in Diamond Way, and there will be there will be Diamond Way members who will see this because they, they do that. Um, I saw the first they're not one. Quite yeah. as, they're not quite as, you know, on it as OSA are, but they will be watching this and they will be trolling. Um, and they will be talking nonsense as they always do. But anyway, um, I guess I would say it's, it's a beautiful day to, to be free. And um, yeah. it's always a beautiful day to be free, regardless of the weather in the UK. And uh, and I guess I would say, ask yourself, is this what you wanted? Is this really Buddhism? Is this really what Buddhism is about? Is this really what you wanted? Is this really what you believe? Do you really agree with the beliefs of, that Ola Nidal puts out in his books? Is this really... Is this really what you want? Is this really, is this really Buddhism? You know? 
Yeah. So and and you're and you're uh, willing to speak out and 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 also help anybody that wants to uh, kind of. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. If anyone, if anyone is watching this from Dan Ray who is getting out of it, then they can contact me. But I, I don't, I don't know how much help I'll be after fifteen years because I don't know what's going on inside. But like, I, yeah, yeah. But you understand the process uh, and the, uh, yeah, I the do, mentality. I do, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's yeah. what SPTV is all about, isn't it? Because we're all we're all supporting each other yeah. through our experiences and our do I have to say it really like when you when you first get out there's a period of I've heard so many people on SPTV talk about this there's a there's a shorter period where you go through a huge amount of change and re kind of discover yourself and then there's a much longer term thing right. where you kind of, I've heard it described as peeling the layers of the onion, right? Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so I guess SPTV can be there for both things. But mm -hmm. I think certainly for, for myself, and I think also for you, Marilyn, we're in, we're more in the onion stage. Yeah. And every, sometimes, sometimes when a new bit of onion peels off, there will be tears because that's what onions do. But I like you know, that, yeah. so I know, I know. I should be a poet too, shouldn't I? Um, <laughs> and uh, I used to write songs. Um, I wrote a song when I got out of Diamond Way, which will probably never be never be published. But it was very cathartic. So that's another thing I'd recommend. Um, where was I? Yeah. So I think SPTV is really a great, you know. Thing for helping people through that process, regardless of which stage you're at and well, where you are. I would love, that, I yeah. would love to hear, I would love to hear your song sometime. And uh, yeah, I mean, you don't have to to publish it to to have it uh, be heard, right? Although well, you I probably should. You don't want to it. steal it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, do oh. you want to do a part? Do you want to do a part three? <laughs> Because all of a sudden um, people are coming in asking, yeah, people are coming in and making comments well, and asking questions. I, <laughs> I mean, I guess that's up to you, Marilyn. If you want to do a part three, um, we can just, I guess, we can just do a stream. I mean, we can do maybe, yeah, I mean, um, maybe something on, um, like you were just saying about the onion. Just doesn't have to yeah, be but, um, completely structured, but we could just. Uh, just chat about cult recovery and our, our own experiences because we kind of do like when I'm on a stream and, and uh, you'll say something like on a Sunday and I'll pop it up and I'll be like, Oh my God. Yeah. That's so right. It will almost be having a conversation. So that would be really and yeah, fun. The other me. day when you were, you, I can't remember what it was. You said something about, Oh uh, yeah. The anger thing. That was it. And you were saying about how, like we were talking through the chat about how, yeah. Yeah. anger was something that was not allowed and that was kind of I wouldn't say it's a major thing but it was that was a bit of an onion for me you know so yeah um, it was almost it yes. yeah I, I forgot what you said but but that that kind of um sparked something in my mind and I was like yeah this was how it was explained to me but it's almost mm -hmm. like semantics but it is it is very uncanny and and what you were saying about SPTV being that um, that forum and that platform for us all to uh, heal together and talk about it. Diamond Way Peeler, please. Yeah, no thanks. <laughs> Been there, done that. No. <laughs> Diamond Tip Blade yeah, on that your was peeler. A for that. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Onion made of granite. Yeah. Everybody's having fun in the chat now. They all they have I'm been all along. But... Fun. Yeah. Uh, there was a there was a question there about um uh, this one, I think. I would love to know which group that was. Um do you want me to read it or you want uh, to read yeah, it out loud? A... Yeah, sorry, yeah, for those who are listening. Um N theta. 
in Theta, sorry, says uh, there was a Buddhist cult member that attended a seminar I did in Scientology. Same tactics, coercive control. I was surprised to find four other destructive cult, former destructive cult members in the audience. Yeah. I, I'd love to know which. Do we have an answer? No, it'll come. Um, yeah, so it just keeps going, going on, huh? Oh, here we go. Yeah. Oh. So how do you say his name again? I can't. No, I don't want to say it. <laughs> Wait. Oh, this this person. Yeah. Not Hans Anita, Christian. right? Hans Christian Schwartz. Uh, I think part of why SPTV works so well for other cult survivors is the sheer density of control mechanisms they employ. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, Sorry, I keep yep. forgetting to read them out. Oh, that's okay. That's yeah. That's okay. I I get corrected if I don't. Nobody's gonna nobody's gonna say anything to you, but <laughs> I get yeah. corrected. Marilyn, I was doing dishes or I was folding my laundry. <laughs> No idea which. No idea which. Okay, fair enough. Well, as Mitch would say, we'll let the mystery be. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Just looking at all the nice chatting going on. Oh, there was one starred one, wasn't there? Let's oh, have a look at that. It? Here we are. Uh, Joel McCoyne, in the wild and woolly 60s, there was a group that had a commune. They were full on hippies. Later they disbanded, and four of them opened the Church of Scientology mission. Always thought this was interesting. Yeah, hippies gonna hippie. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think if I know which one that was. There's it's yeah, it seems pretty, pretty typical. Kind of reminds me of um what I can't remember his last name, Jeff. That was he was um in the group Pe people. He was a Scientologist and he worked at the in base as um he's a composer. I know he does music. What's his last name? Levin, maybe? Jeff Levin. He's oh, Jeff done, Levin, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Makes me th think of uh, his story. Did you see his his uh documentary, Brothers Broken, about he and his brother? How they they finally later in life um came back together, but they were uh disconnected because of Scientology. But I think I I've seen that one there. Really, really, really good. But yeah, they were they were hippies and musicians and just kind of stumbled mm -hmm. into Scientology. Yeah, back then that's kind of I know uh, that feeling. Yep. <laughs> Marilyn, put up my oh. Put up mine, see if Joe can pronounce it. Yeah, I can't pronounce the name of that place in Wales. Sorry. I can give it a go, but I probably, I, I'm not going to even do it. I'm going to butcher it. Um, ask Selena. Yeah, it's, so this is a place in Wales, which is known for having the longest name in the UK uh, oh. of a place. Um, and Llan, Llanflier something something gogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogogog
So, do you want to have a go at that? Because I'm not sure I do. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. Um, nah. Okay. I feel like I have to go through it in my head first, but there's just no, it's too long. Why are there so many consonants? Okay. Because Welsh. All right. When fair would Nick, we no, looks like there's grocery in there. Oh, go goggery. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Goggery, chewy, rope, woolen, so go go. Oh, Selena is going to kill us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry, Selena. What the? I don't, okay, you okay. You so, if I it. break this I down, totally the double that. L, the double L is a sh. A what? Or sh something. The double L is a sh sound. A um, oh, here oh, we go. Somebody, oh, here we go. Well, Thank God. Goodness. Yeah. It was 12 degrees over coastal parts of eastern England with cloudy skies, but in the sunshine in northwest Wales at RAF Mona, just up the road from Clan Bible Crush Wingish Gorgeta Quindrobo, Clantisilio Go Go Go, a temperature. Well done. I love the way he was just like, no, this is nothing. Just rolls it's just, off the top. Yeah, yeah. It's just just a Tuesday oh, morning. Um I have a question for Hans Christian Schwartz. So oh there was a um there was a law which passed in Germany about the production of meat products in the 90s or early 2000s which had the longest name of something in German. And I can't remember what the thing was, but if you can remind me of that. Um, but anyway, I'm sorry, I'll read this out as well. Germans can top that with, oh dear. Um, oh my, my eyes are crossing. Kapitens, <laughs> Kapitens Schiff. Locken Schwengel Bedin Element. Something like that. To shift the clock and lock and lock. Oh. Yeah, that's the Welsh double L. I can't read it. Oh, I just spit on my microphone. Stephen said, I've been there. Which place? You've been to all the places, Stephen? Uh, he was saying he's been to that place in Wales. Oh, nice. Uh, Mark is, is asking a question. Um, well, Mitch, as long as it's not Diamond Way. Marcus wants to know what kind of meditations did you do, Joe? Um, so there was... Um, so I'm presuming this is in Diamond Way, not the ones that I did before that. But um, there was, let me see. So there was the first one which everyone did as a group in the group sessions, which would go on for about two hours. Um, there was um, the levels. So... The first one, second one, and the third one was a prostration. So I don't know if that counts as a meditation or not. And then there was a a special one, uh, which went for 24 hours, as I think I mentioned in part one. Um, can't recommend doing it for 24 hours. It zombifies, liquefies your brain. Mm. So did you repeat... Uh phrases and magic because I, I know that in the beginning you had those slides that had the different yeah. uh, meditations with the translations did you just repeat those over and over pretty much yes I repeated them a hundred oh, oh, them 111,111 times how did you count go. them <laughs> with the beats the mala oh really the beats oh that's right that's right I didn't realize and those were when you're beads. doing when you're doing the prostrate, because it's like a long, has 108 beats. And right. so when when you're doing prostrations and you come back up, the beats smack you in the face, which is always nice. Oh my 
Okay. So you got um, like a dent in your head and you're like a zombie and you haven't eaten just in 24 hours. You haven't moved in 24 hours. Mm -hmm. You haven't slept. You haven't done anything. Can you go to the bathroom? Yeah. Um, of course, God, I can't remember. Need to me to ask. Yeah, I think, I, think I, I must have done 24 hours. I must have done. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, um, cults are pretty messed up, huh? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, let's read this out because I keep forgetting. I get in the habit of doing it. Uh, in Theta says, yes, that's why I'm asking. There were mantras. Jeez, what a head fuck. I'm, I'm allowed to say that on this stream, right? Yeah, oh yeah. We're yeah, yeah we're plenty of excellent in. fuck shit bollocks. Yeah. We're an hour and a half in. You're good. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's why. Um, So anything else uh, you wanted to touch on? I it's crap. I suspect yeah. I, <laughs> I suspect you're not talking about Diamond Way here, but I'm gonna choose to uh choose to say you are. So there we go. Thank you, Denver Stevo. Sums it up, um, doesn't it? Sums yeah, it they're, well, they're, they're talking about languages in the chat, which is fine. Um I still think you should, yeah, you should totally do uh, mm -hmm. a stream on your channel, and uh, we'll all tune in. And and uh, I, I, well, I, I, I did have a plan. Anything. I did have a plan to do, um, uh, like a speed running thing. You know how people speed run games? Well, maybe that's not a thing. Anyway, um, it could be a thing. So, I don't know anything about pop. Okay, pop, pop culture. You even say it. Yeah, me neither, but I've seen this is a thing people do. They speed run games, right? So get through the game as quickly as you can. And they I know about stream speed it. dating. I've heard of speed dating. Um, oh, my God. Yeah, no, I'm good, Stephen Brin. Um, as we say here, now you're right, mate. Um, so I, uh, I was going to say, um, yeah, so one of the ideas I had was to speed run learning a language or bits of a language. Oh. I thought that might be a fun idea, but yeah. It's okay. just an idea. We'll see. Nice. Thank you, Terry Ray. Thank you. Yeah, I've I will do yeah. some more music streams soon too as well. Nice. So awesome. Well, what do you think? Um I, I hate to well <laughs> they just keep coming. <laughs> Oh, cuddle I just I thought this was interesting because yeah, I'm familiar ahead. with this. I yeah. had all the time in the world. Uh, they call it the ahead. NKT or New Kadampa tradition, and I've um, I've heard from people in uh, on that forum and in other places. You know, people who've been in these sort of groups that that is yeah a group that's similar, shall we say? Uh, yeah, carry on. You are. Um, there was another one. Did did we unstar that one? I was thinking maybe we could read it out. I don't think it was it unstarred, was it? Oh no, no. Maybe yeah. We could read it out loud for for oh, uh, sorry, yes. for friends who are doing sorry, the dishes and to... laundry. Yes, <laughs> right. sorry, sorry. Keep scrubbing. Um, keep keep knitting. <laughs> right. So cuddle haggis number cuddle haggis sixty six. And by the way, that is an amazing username. I, I love it, Cuddle Haggis. Yeah, um, sorry about all the, the 65 other Cuddle Haggises. Yeah, they just not got the, you know. Um, okay, there is a there is a Buddhist cult, in air quotes, whose HQ is in Oldswater in Cumbria, known as the Kadampa Group. They seriously target HH, the Dalai Lama, and you're only allowed to read their leaders' books by Kelsang Gyatso. Um yeah, so I've heard, I've heard about a bit, bit about this group. Yeah, so interesting. That's the one about the meat. Um, that's the German word, which is the meat law. Rindfleisch, Rindfleisch liefers Kettenstickerungsgesetz. I believe the word was. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Vielen awesome. Dank. Mach mir noch doch 
I messed that one up. Okay. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, so Hans Christian Schwarz hat gesagt, uh, by the way, Joe, that oud that you play, same word in German, uh, a forerunner of the lute, so Walter van der Wulgelweide might have known it. Yeah. Um, Walter von der Wulgelweide. Is that as in the, the Vogelauter from the early 20th century? I don't know. Um, yes, so oud is actually originally from the Arabic word al aoud which means... Um, which means the wood or something, because it has the wooden soundboard. And so um, it's been loan worded into lots of languages. Um, whereas as the as the oud came into Europe, um, into Spain through the Moors, the Moorish invasions, and also in Italy and other places, it got um, it got kind of translated or transliterated to words like loot or uh, Portuguese alaude, Spanish laud. Um, you can see that these come more directly from the Arabic al aoud. And so, um, and yeah, uh, German lauter, French lut becomes English lut. And so it is kind of the same word, but they came to mean very different instruments throughout the centuries. Hmm. And I could talk that, about that endlessly as I do. Yeah, but, no, I love it. Yeah. Um, that, that kind of sparks the. Uh, a question in me is uh, when you when you were young, like when did you when did you start? I know that you're you're a luthier and you you build instruments, mm -hmm. but you're an amazing musician as well. What you're what was kind. the progression? Well, <laughs> it's just true. It's just true. Uh, when did you start playing and and having an interest in music? And did you while you were in Diamond Way was that something that um, you were you were also doing and good did it, question. Good did it, question, did yeah. it give you comfort? comfort? Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'd say, yeah, it gave me some comfort and was quite cathartic, especially like I say, I, I, I wrote a song um, after I left. So yeah, it was definitely a cathartic thing. Um, I guess there was a noticeable change in the kinds of songs I was writing they do have that slight zombified quality. Mm. They're kind of like, ooh, out there. Um, so there's that, I guess. Um, yeah, it wasn't so, although Diamond Way has or had and probably still has its kind of glossy brochures and that artistic thing, there wasn't like, it wasn't something that they encouraged as such. If you were a musician, it was kind of, you should be meditating you know this is nice but you know this is not right yeah this is not kind of real and this is not a thing and only things that we say are actually real and you should mm -hmm. disregard all this there was a bit of that but um yeah so yeah there's it was still there but i guess yeah so again you were you were only you were in your late teens early 20s um, when you joined and so you were already a, a musician you already had interest in in music and were writing writing music before that like as yep. a kid nice oh I've always been yeah, that's 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 been lifelong I've always been obsessed with music this I don't think any would anybody would ever become a luthier if they weren't obsessed with music and sound <laughs> that's that's a given right and I think that's yeah. you know I think that's common among musicians is that it's just an obsession as some maybe some people it's not good. but yeah I think you it's know? a good good obsession it's, you get your uh your yeah. outlier 10,000 hours and that's good yeah I I mean I, I think that there is a, a really I was talking with Liz Gill the other day about mm -hmm. that having the creativity she you know she's a writer obviously and uh a grower and has a lot of other crafty things that she likes to do and as I gardening, we were relating. Um, yeah, she's a well, she's a cannabis a hemp. Uh, oh, cannabis growing, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I guess it's kind of gardening, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's gardening, yeah, it's a yeah. growing plant. Yeah, uh, she grew with hemp, I think. Um, I'm not sure what if she's doing it right now, but yeah, um, definitely an interest. And her the name of her book was is a uh confession yes. of an ex Scientologist pothead, so yeah, yeah. I'm waiting for my. For my copy, I swear everybody's getting their copy before me because I live, you know, in the boonies in the 
the rural sticks here. So I'm waiting for my copy. But do you, like that, I have a question for you. Yeah. Here's a question for you. Um, so you say you live in the boonies. That means you live nowhere, right? Yes. Yeah. Kind of. So I, I have an American friend who says that in America, you say, if you're in the middle of nowhere, you say you live in, the, in what's it? You live in bumfuck nowhere. Is that a thing that you yeah. say? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so in, in America, I'm going to do some translation here. In American English, a bum is a homeless person, right? Yeah, that could be. Yeah. yeah. So in British English, a bum is your ass. Yeah, it could be in English um, too. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so when oh. you say you live in bumfuck nowhere, it's a bit like, oh, okay. Oh yeah, I never thought of it that way. Yeah, I guess it could be derogatory. Hmm. Yeah. And about derogatory. And we just, just say east. Anyway. We just say east nowhere or east. Yeah. East BF nowhere. <laughs> yeah. BFE Egypt. What does BFE stand for? Oh, okay. Oh, There's the answer. Egypt. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. As in, if you live in the, the desert, Satchuan. I don't understand. <laughs> We just say nowhere, okay. <laughs> or we say, yeah, east, yeah, east nowhere. <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, I, I was called to task at uh, saying that I live in the holler. So I say I live in a holler because technically it's just a, it's just a slang for a hollow, right? Hollowed out people okay. land. Um, that, you know, when you have a, a creek or a river, creek coming through and oh, over river. the years, okay. hollowed out, yep. yeah, hollowed out a little valley between two two mountains and uh i say the holler because there's a certain connotation when you live in the holler is you know a lot of pickup does that girl. mean you're a holler back girl a what are you a holler back girl holler back oh yeah no. <laughs> yeah no you go out here and you you holler and it, it and it echoes like three times <laughs> maybe that's why <laughs> i can't Whenever um, my dog is in the backyard and uh, is barking, he sounds like he's he's like up the road because the way the his bark oh, echoes how interesting. off of the okay. mountains, up the hills. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. I'm like, did he get out? No, he's still there. He's just, yeah, his bark is just echoing. But yeah, very rural. And uh, I guess we don't have Pony Express anymore, but but close to Pony. Sorry, White Express. The Pony Express was back in the day before, you know, they had the the uh, mail service with the cars and all that. They would have mail delivered by Pony, you know, by... Okay, makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Pony Express. Yeah. Holler back, girl. <laughs> no, wait, Terry, I'm not a happy hooker anymore. Crochet hooker. Because, <laughs> you know, crochet with a hook. <laughs> uh, I did. I'm afraid to try it again. Saskatchewan? Saskatchewan. Uh, oh, Saskatchewan, yeah. Are you yeah. are you familiar with um there's a there's a type of Chinese there's a place in China and a type of Chinese cuisine called Sichuan? Sichuan, yeah. I I used to know someone who would pronounce that Saskatchewan. Oh, really? Saskatchewan. <laughs> we could so, talk about we could talk about pronunciations in uh massachusetts which is where where i'm from i live literally live five minutes from massachusetts but when i was um growing up well i i moved out here to western mass when i was six almost seven but out there i do remember having friends that um you know there was Paktika and harvard yard kind of kind of talk and uh we we drank instead of soda or um pop we drank tonic or pop <laughs> okay and um, I had a friend. They just they just drop all kinds of um, consonants and everything. I, I had a friend from Medford, which is M E D F O R D. She calls it she call it Mefa, like M E F A Mefa, or Worcester, you know, which has like Worcestershire. Yeah, Mefa instead of Medford, or Worcestershire, or Worc Worcester. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, Worc Worcester. <laughs> Worcester. Worcester, yeah. Mm -hmm. Worcestershire. Worcestershire sauce. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, Cuddle Haggis 66. I'm going to say it again. Great name. Uh, does Diamond Way 
have an HQ in the UK and satellite groups in the UK, please? If so, could the mods put their website up in the chat, please? Glad you like the screen name. Um, yeah, so as far as I know, their, their HQ in the UK is in London. Um, but their main HQ is in, they have one in Germany and one in Spain. Um, the one in Germany is called what they call the Europe Center. Um, and then the one in Spain is called Carmagern, I think. Um, so I think they're the main two kind of HQs, particularly the Europe Center in Germany. Um, but their kind of HQ in the UK is, so my information might be out of date here, but I can tell you where in London it is, if you like. Um, but I do remember they were going to buy a building called the Beaufort Building, and there was lots of protests against them when they tried to buy that building um, because because of the things that Ola Nidal comes out with. There were lots of um, protests at the time when they tried to buy this building. So I, I don't know if they successfully managed to buy this building. If they did buy the Beaufort building, then they're probably based there now rather than where they used to be based. Um, so my information may be out of date, but I can share with you where in London they're based, if that would be helpful or were based. So, yeah, and they have satellite things all around the UK and same in other countries. Um, oh, is that the website? I don't know. I don't know. I haven't. I have no reason to go to the website. Um, let's see. <laughs> Denver, this is a bad website. Do not go here. Here's the link. <laughs> okay, so I found their UK site. Um, as, um, as I think I've mentioned, they're big on their shiny brochures and branding and everything. Um, Diamond Way, Buddha. Yeah, so there we go. They've got... United Kingdom. Yeah, not only are they kind of claiming this thing of, you know, they're legit Buddhist, but they're, um, as as the uh, URL suggests, but they're, um, the website's very, you know, shiny and they're all about all about that and so um yeah there's a list of their centers thank you terry ray um and thank you for saving me from having to go to the website there you go as yeah they'll say you um, haven't gone there <laughs> um yeah i guess if i know i'm curious did they get the beaufort building i need to know um uh Oh, I can't just select it, can I? Um, let me see. Okay, it does look like they bought the Beaufort building. So, oh, okay. Because the, the picture they've got of the place there is not is not the one it used to be. Yeah, the Beaufort. So, I guess you... Do you want the address? I, why do you want the address? I don't know, but if you want the address, you can, yeah. Um, I guess I would say, so although there were protests when they bought this thing, I would say, I would urge you not to harass cult members um, because firstly, the, the members of the group, like generally speaking, how can I put it? I feel like these sort of protests should be targeted at the leadership, right? And not the um, right. not the rank and file members because they can be in like not a good place mentally, number one. Number two, it's going to feed into this kind of victim mentality of all oh, the entire world's against us. Yep. And when a cult thinks that the entire world's against us, that's when you have things like Heaven's Gate or Jonestown. And, you know, we don't want that. And we don't want to push them further into their beliefs. We want to help them and be compassionate and be understanding. And so I guess this is why I say, like, we can put the address on screen. Why not? It's a public place. But, like, I would please urge you to not do any sort of harassment or... And not to mention, 
if you harass them, you're as bad as them because that's what they do to other people. So just, yeah, just thought I'd put that out there. Yeah, very, very well, well stated, Joe. You made a lot of, a lot of good points right there in that, that mm -hmm. one capsule. Thank you. Um, Thank absolutely. you. You're hundred percent right. And it, I know from being in my cult with it, there was all this, you know, emphasis on having a common enemy and it kind of made you like mm. double down yep. and be suspicious yep. of people. And I think one thing that kind of led me out very gradually was the the kindness and the understanding that I was shown more so by people on the outside than people on the inside. Yeah, so, absolutely. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, wow, we've yeah. covered so much, all the languages of the world and cults and yeah, so many, be, um, many things. Be, wow. An hour and 45 minutes. Wow. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah um, it's a great thing. I was saying my, my voice was dying when I started this. I think I it's, it's a bit better now, but it's still like a bit, I don't know, but must be that. And magical I think this tea. is also, huh? <laughs> The magical tea you're drinking or whatever you're drinking yeah maybe mint, mint Moroccan mint tea there we go so you oh, should try okay. it um i'm not sponsored by any tea brands um now marilyn on the other hand marilyn is sponsored by what am i sponsored I'm, by i'm joking i'm joking i'm joking <laughs> not none anything. of us are sponsored by tea um so uh no marilyn would be sponsored by coffee of course because coffee cults and yeah. cults um, Although I've, I've been known to drink tea on the stream. I was just, I've just been afraid to bring that teapot back out, but I think I will Sunday. My Limoges. <laughs> I love it. We have to change yeah. the name of the group. I know. Yeah. Your secret is out good thing I didn't say crochet because I would have. Yeah. So it's crafts. I thought of crafts because like even, even uh, yeah. anything can be a craft, even, even making like joining, not joining a cult, but like crafting a cult can be a craft, bad craft. But, you know, think of all kinds of crafts, witchcraft, <laughs> kinds of crafts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So this is this has been great. And uh, I'm so glad that you were more uh, comfortable this time. It does get easier. I think you're right. Yeah, it does get easier. Yeah. And I think that's, again, a big factor in, you know, I, I'm not as nervous, so I can talk for way too long. So, Never. you know. No such thing. No such thing. But you're welcome back anytime and uh yeah thank you, thank so, you for having me it's again. been it's been good it's been great fun and um yeah i think it's important that we speak out and absolutely yeah because as i say the information was not out there when i got involved and so i want to make it so that people don't have that experience because i can't recommend it i agree so, yeah. i agree and i i commend you for you're, you know, we always say courage, but I think it does take a certain amount of courage and a certain a certain amount of um, just, you know, inner fortitude. Like, okay, I'm going to put it out there, and and it's like baby steps. You know, I, for a while it, it was hard for yeah. me to even say to utter my cult leader's mm -hmm. name. Now I'm like Marlene Sweeney. Yeah, I knew what Marlene and Marlene. And, yeah, that Marlene. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's gotten a lot easier. <laughs> That's for sure. She's earned she's earned that privilege. <laughs> And so did uh, Ali, whatever. <laughs> I always mess up his name. What was it? Ole Nido? Oh, Ole Nido. Yeah. Ole Nido. Ole Nido. That's the one. Yeah, I got to practice that one again. Yeah. Uh, so we need to wrap up soon, I believe. But Yes, we do. Yeah. All right, everyone. Thank you so much Bye. for joining us. And thank you, Joe. This has been great. And we'll see you Thank you for soon. having me. And um, have a great day. Yeah. All right. Bye, everybody. All right. Take See care, you. everyone. Bye. Bye.